All right, guys, we are at that point where it's time to say goodbye to one guitar and um, hello to another or three or whatever. You'll catch up in future episodes. But, um, yeah, East L.A. Cutaway is going somewhere else, and it's going to stay in the L.A. area, which I'm glad about, and it'll probably... I'll get some glimpses of it with musicians and stuff here and there, but um, we're going to have a quick look at this thing on the bench front and back, have a kind of close up and a recap of what's going on. And then I got a special treat for you after that. But um, the East LA cutaway um, has been a good guitar for me. It's kind of like the guitar that we did for Troy Murrah called the, restaurant junk pile i'll give you an episode link right up there but big body guitars made by k some of the biggest bodies i've worked on tone bars in the middle putting pickups on them is kind of iffy uh, if the pickups go in the body we used a, a k pickup here and that worked out good but the main thing here for me where i learned a ton on this guitar is putting the neck on because the neck was completely detached and we ended up with something that's playable. So let's have a quick look at the, the front and back of this guitar and then I'll tell you what's going to happen a little bit later this evening. Let's go to the bench. All right, let's start at the back of the guitar. Of course, there's the Paul Miro Junk Pile guitar sticker. We've uh, used linseed oil after we used the feed and wax product but we've got our typical stuff we've got our grease zerk right there there's a little piece of relic wood right there maybe this is time to zoom in now there we go there's a little piece of relic wood right there that came from the site that Fred McDowell was located by George Mitchell we've got a strap button there we've got some chick flick teal dowling hiding the bolt running through the neck uh, neck on this thing is big and fat like a baseball bat which is what these things are known for we've got a nickel right up there from 1927 that represents the flood of the mississippi river horrendous on the southern economy and caused a great deal of movement to the northern united states and then of course we got a set of gibson tuners on this thing let's turn it around all right starting up at the top we've got the old craftsman logo that was left in place we've got the truss rod cover that was made out of a piece of the same license plate that the california junk pile that we saw frank goldwasser playing over and over in episodes here and there and everywhere where am i Oh yeah, right up there, episode right up there, right about now. We've got all these, let's zoom out just a little bit. There we go, that's better. We've got all these matchbooks direct out of East LA. Those were fun locating. Um, we've got the Laurent Bompart custom pick guard artwork, and I chose that because the colors of the artwork kind of match East LA and it certainly uh, beat pulling graffiti off an overpass. I like this. Thank you, Laurent. Um, we've got a K uh, pancake or um, Kleenex box pickup, whatever you want to call it. Um, Hershey bar. Um, it sounded great. I'm going to give you a link below to the eBay shop um, where I got that. Um, it has volume controls and volume control and tone control for this pickup on the side here it's got a floating bridge it's got the original tailpiece so i am really really happy with the way this turned out considering it was sitting dried out in a garage in the east los angeles a few months ago all right, let's go here. R.J. Mishu put the hurt on this thing. You might not know R.J. as 
a guitarist, but you certainly know him as one of the premier blues harp, harmonica, harp, artists in the United States, and he has an international following. So, um, love RJ, you just go in, there's no pretense, he doesn't need a $10,000, $50,000 instrument to play, he just sits down and plays, and I know that I'm going to enjoy having someone of the caliber of RJ do something with my guitar that I can't do. So, let's close this episode out. I'm going to give you a link to RJ's stuff down below. Once you see what he does and see what kind of person he is, you're going to want to get a hold of some of his music and familiarize yourself with it because it's transporting yourself back in time to the roots of the music we like, and then there's a progression of blues in his work. So, uh, don't forget to give me a like, subscribe, and let's kiss the L.A. cutaway. Goodbye. Let's go to Ventura.
easy money. I think the neighbors have had enough of that. Listen.